Tonight in Syria, people living in the last opposition stronghold of Idlib are awaiting attack. All despite a joint statement by Iran, Russia and Turkey saying there's no military solution to the conflict. It can only be resolved through political means. The UN estimates around 400,000 people, 400,000, have died as a result of the war so far. The World Bank's been counting the economic costs of the seven-year conflict for those uh, remaining and those in the country. It is, it pales, of course, into significant insignificance in relation to the, 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 the loss of life and the suffering, but significant nonetheless, because it does paint a picture of desperation for the region. So, $226 billion as part of the GDP has been wiped out uh, over 2011 to 16, four times the country's GDP just a year ago, a year before. Around 7% of Syrian housing stock had been lost by the end of last year. CNN's Fred Plykin is in Damascus in Syria with more. Fred, I emphasize firmly that we cannot equate dollars, counting dollars with counting the lost life and the misery and the, the genocide that has seemed to have taken place in, in Syria. But, but the reality is Syria is a regional player of size and their economy is significant if for no other reason. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right, Richard. And, and of course, also the rebuilding process that Syria will need now. And you're absolutely right. It is one that is gigantic. I've traveled to so many places here in Syria, and there's so many towns that are just completely destroyed. You know, the rebuilding process is going to also be very important as far as the stability, not just of Syria and the future is concerned, but really of many other places in this region as well. So it's a massive issue and certainly also one where the international community is having a huge trouble dealing with all of it and how it wants to start going about all of this. Now, you just mentioned, of course, one of the things that's going on is that the civil war is still raging in Syria, even though the Syrian government feels that it's now gained the upper hand and that it might be coming to the end. And the government here is now looking towards what it can do to rebuild in the future. Here's what we saw. Even as airstrikes indicate an offensive on the last major rebel-held area may be imminent, the Syrian government is inviting international businesses back to the country, putting on its largest trade fair since the civil war started. The organizers say representatives from almost 50 countries are attending. I think it will be attractive for the, all uh, people around the world to see Syria, to see uh, the real Syria. Many of the companies showing off their products come from nations supporting the Assad government, like Russia, China, and Iran. We are going to have a long, uh, what to say, a long-term uh, cooperation with this country and uh, uh, businessmen in Syria. Now, this is a good opportunity to us. The Syrian army, backed by Russia and Iran, has been making massive territorial gains, cornering the rebels in Idlib province in the north on the brink of defeat. The Syrian government is trying to send a clear message with this trade fair. The war is coming to an end. Its forces are winning, and now they're getting ready to move into a new phase of this conflict. That new phase is reconstruction of the many destroyed towns and cities in the country. But with Bashar al-Assad and his Russian and Iranian allies accused of war crimes, which they deny, many Western countries and companies are reluctant to get involved from Syrian officials, defiance. Things are going ahead and we are very optimistic. Um, we want international companies to come and invest in this country and it's safe, it's secure. While the Damascus trade fair is a bright spot for Syria's government, there seems no doubt the road to reconstruction will be long and difficult for this war-torn country. And it certainly is long. It will be very difficult, Richard. You know, one of the things that we've seen in and around the country uh, traveling here and a lot of these towns that have been destroyed is that many of the places, even if the fighting ended there, say, four or five years ago, a lot of those places still very much in ruins. And there are some people who are trying to come back, who are trying to rebuild their houses. There's some markets that are being rebuilt. But the really large projects, the whole cities, the whole housing blocks, that's something that we really haven't seen very much of because, of course, uh, there's a, there is a big lack of funding to try and get anything going because of all the political ramifications around the Syria crisis, Richard. Fred, thank you. Thank you for staying up late for us tonight and bringing us that report.